Hello and welcome to today's lesson on line and angle relationships. This is going to cover topics in the standard 2.2 .2 in geometry and then also that study island topic called line and angle relationships. So if you're working in either of those two places this is where you want to be for a little extra help or a review. Um, once again this lesson there's going to be vocabulary words that you're going to want to know and such as supplementary and complementary and linear and vertical angles. So the, when you read those words in geometry problems, you just need to know what they mean. It makes the problem much, much easier. So um, I would recommend keeping flashcards or another way that you learn vocabulary words so that you can, anytime you get a new vocabulary word that you need to learn, you can just make out a flashcard real quick and add it to your pile and then be studying those daily so that you really get those vocabulary words. Um, so if you're going along in geometry and you hit a word you don't know, look that definition up. It's going to make the problem that much easier and that lets you know what words you still need to study. Um, and you can also, as you're watching these videos, you can pause, rewind, fast forward so that you can um, stay caught up. And then you can also pause at the beginning of a problem that I'm working out and work the problem out yourself mm -hmm. and then see how you do when you watch the video. And then, as always, make sure that you're taking really good notes. So I'm super glad that you're here, and let's go ahead and look at our lesson. Two angles are supplementary if the sum of their measures equals 180 degrees. So that means if they're adjacent, but they don't have to be adjacent, they're going to create a line. Two angles are complementary if the sum of their measures equals 90 degrees. So that means if they're adjacent, now they don't have to be, they're going to make a right angle. And what I mean by they're not adjacent means they don't have to touch. So they could be two separate angles like this too. Now one way you have to keep this straight is supplementary is 180 degrees. There is a hidden S in this 8 for supplementary. Complementary is 90 degrees and there's a hidden C here for complementary. Then we also have vertical angles. These are the pairs of opposite angles made by two intersecting lines. So I have two intersecting lines and vertical angles are going to be the ones that are across from each other. So here I have two pairs of vertical angles. And vertical angles are always congruent. So that means they're the exact same size. Alright, so some other types of angles we're going to look at is ones that are created when you have a transversal. So a transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines. So oftentimes those lines are parallel. So I have my two parallel lines and then my transversal intersects both of them. So my purple line there is my transversal. Okay. When I create this, I create three different pairs. The first type of pair you could create is corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are angles that are in corresponding places and one is on the interior and one is on the exterior. And what I mean by interior and exterior is when I have these three lines, I have my two parallel cut by the transversal, it creates an interior and an exterior. So my interior are these four angles in between the two parallel lines, and my exterior is these four angles outside of the parallel lines. And so when I'm looking down here at my example, corresponding angles are going to be angles that are in the same spot. So 3 and 7 are both up and to the left. So angle 3 and angle 7 is one pair. Now angle 8 and 4 is another pair because they're going to be up and to the right. Angle 5 and 1 are going to be another pair because they're down and to the left, both of them, 
from the intersection. And then my last pair is going to be angle 6 and angle 2 because they are both down and to the right from the intersection. So when you have corresponding angles, you're always going to have four pairs of them and they're going to be congruent when you have parallel lines. All three of these pairs of types of angles are all actually going to be congruent. So that's why I drew this bracket here. And congruent just means they're the exact same measure. So if one's 90 degrees, the other one's 90 degrees. If one's 32 and a half degrees, the other one's 32 and a half degrees. So our next example is alternate interior angles. And these are angles in the interior that are on opposite sides of the transversal. So my interior angles here are 5, 6, 3, and 4. 5 and 4 are on opposite sides, so that's one pair. 3 and 6 are on opposite sides, so that's another pair. And the last type is alternate exterior angles. And these are angles in the exterior that are on opposite sides of the transversal. So the angles on the exterior are 7, 8, 1, and 2. 7 and 2 are on opposite sides of the transversal, and 8 and 1 are on opposite sides. So those are going to be my angle pairs that are congruent. There's always two of these ex alternate exterior angles, and there's always two of these alternate interior angles. And this is a picture that shows you all three. So we have two pairs of alternate interior, the purple and the black. We have two pairs of alternate exterior, the gr blue and the pink, and then we have four pairs of corresponding, the pink, the blue, the purple, and the black. Go ahead and look at some notes. We have angles A and angle B are complementary. So complementary, 90 degrees. If angle A is 34 degrees, what is the measure of angle B? Well, I know together they have to be 90, so if I subtract 34 from 90, that gives me 56 left over for angle B, so my answer is D. Okay, the measures of two complementary angles are 4x plus 10 and x plus 8. What is the measure of the smaller angle? Well, I, first I need to solve for x, and so complementary, I know that means they add to 90 degrees, so I'm going to take 4x plus 10, add it to x plus 8, and I know those two angles equal 90 because it's complementary, and I'm just going to have to solve. So my first step is to combine like terms. I have two x's and they're on the same side, so I'm just going to add them as they are, so they're on the same side, they stay the same. 4x plus a single x is 5x. And then I also have 10 and 8 on the same side to combine. 10 plus 8 is 18, and that still equals 90. And now it's a two-step equation. So I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides, and that leaves me with 5x equals 72. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5, and I see that my answers are in decimals, so I'm going to go ahead and do 72 divided by 5, and that's 14.4. Now, this is what x equals, not what the measure of the smaller angle equals. I have to go and find the measure of the smaller angle. And looking at these two, you could calculate them both, but I can tell that this one's going to be the smaller angle because there's less being multiplied and added. However, if you're not sure, figure them both out. There's no harm in that. So I know x plus 8, but I now know that x is 14.4, and I'm going to add 8 to that, and that's going to give me 22.4, which is the measure of the smaller angle. So my answer here is A. Now here's one that's very similar, only now I'm dealing with supplementary. So that means it's going to be 180 degrees. So I have 4x plus 4 plus the 6x plus 10 
Now, I know when I add these two angles, they're going to equal 180 because they're supplementary. So I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. I have a 4x and a 6x. They're on the same side, so I'm going to keep them the same when I add them. So that 4x plus 6x is 10x. And then I also have a 4 and a 10. They're also on the same side, so I'm going to keep them the same when I add them. 4 plus 10 is 14. That equals 180. And now I have a two-step equation, so I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides. These cancel, and I'm left with 10x equals 180 minus 14 is 166. Divide both sides by 10, and x is going to equal 16.6. Now that's the measure of x that makes them supplementary. N now, but it's asking for the measure of the larger angle. So always double check if it's asking for a measure or x, because that gets that little forget. If you forget that step, it's an easy way to miss a whole bunch of problems. So I'm not sure which one of these is going to give me the larger answer. So I'm going to have to figure out both of them. So I'm going to have 4x plus 4, but I now know x is 16.6. So I'm going to substitute that in. 4 times 16.6 is 66.4, and when I add 4 to that, that gives me 70.4. Then I also have the 6x plus 10, but I now know that x is 16.6, so I'm going to substitute that in, and 6 times 16.6 is 99.6. And when I add 10 to that, that's 109.6. So the larger angle here is 109.6, so my answer is D. All right, angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. If angle 1 is 40 to 3 degrees, what is the measure of angle 2? Well, supplementary means that they add to 180 degrees. So I know I have 180 degrees, but 43 of that is taken from angle 1, so I'm going to subtract it off. And 180 minus 43 is 137 degrees left for angle 2. So my answer is B. Which of the following are vertical angles? Well, we have E and H. They're across from each other. We have G and F. They're across from each other. And we have A and D and B and C. So there's four sets here. But the two that are listed, or the one pair that is listed, is going to be C, B and C, because they're directly across from each other in the intersection. The vertical angles have to be on the same intersection. Okay, which of the following of these are on alternate interior angles? Well, my interior angles here are C, D, F, E, and F, and I need two pairs that are on I need two angles that are on opposite sides of that. So it's going to be C and F, or it's going to be E and D. And the pair that they lift, list here is going to be B, D and E. Which of the following are alternate exterior angles? Well, my exterior angles are A, B, G, and H. And the two pairs that are created by picking opposite ones are A and H and B and G. So either of those pairs could be my answer, but the only one that is listed is D, B, and G. Which of the following are corresponding angles? This means that they're in corresponding places on different intersections. So I have four of these. I have A and E, B and F, C and H, C and G. So let's see which one of those is listed. If I look at A, that gives me D and H. Those are, from starting from the intersection, those are both to the right and down. So they're in corresponding places on the different in intersections in D and H. So the lines RS and TU are parallel. If angle W equals 119 degrees, then what is the measure of angle Z? So I would recommend that you copy this picture down so that way you can write straight on it what is equal to 119 degrees. 
He wants to know what is the measure of angle Z? Well, these are vertical angles, W and Z, so I know that they're both congruent. So if W is 119, then Z is 119, and that's my answer, letter B. So here I have a similar problem. Lines R, S, and T, U are parallel. If angle W equals 129 degrees, then what is the measure of angle P? So I'm going to write 129 here so I can see it. And it wants to know what is angle P? Well, W and P are alternate interior angles. And I know when those lines are parallel, that makes these two congruent. So if W is 129 degrees, then P is 129 degrees. So my answer is B. Okay, another similar problem. I have two parallel lines. And it wants to know if angle M is 118 degrees, what is the measure of angle Z? So when you copy it down, you're going to write 118 degrees by M, because that's what the problem tells us, and it wants to know what is Z. Well, M and Z are alternate exterior angles, and I know those are congruent when I have parallel lines. So if M is 118 degrees, then Z is 118 degrees. So my answer is C. If lines R, S, and T, U are parallel, and the measure of angle M equals 115 degrees, what is the measure of angle W? So once I copy down this picture, I'm going to write 115 by angle M, and I'm going to put a question mark by angle W. And once I do that, I see the two angles I'm working with are corresponding angles. They're both left and up from the intersection. And I know corresponding angles with parallel lines are congruent, so I know both of these are 115 degrees, so my answer is D. The line F and G are cut by the transversal G. The measure of angle 2 equals 4x plus 45, so I know something about this angle. And the measure of angle 7 is 8x minus 7, so I know something about this angle. What value of x will show that the lines f and g are parallel? Well, if they're going to be parallel, then I need all my special angle pairs to be true. 7 and 2, those angles are alternate exterior angles, so that means I need these to be congruent. So that means I need to find the x that when I set these two expressions equal to each other is going to make that true. So I'm going to set up the equation 4x plus 45 equals 8x minus 15. So I'm going to start solving that by combining like terms. I have two x terms, but they're on opposite sides, so I can either bring the 8x over or the 4x over. I'm choosing to bring the 4x over because it keeps things positive. But when the 4x switches sides, it has to switch signs, so I'm subtracting 4x from both sides. These 4x's cancel, and I'm left with 45 equals 4x minus 15. So next I'm going to add 15 to both sides. These 15's cancel, and I'm left with 45 plus 15 is 60 equals 4x. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. 60 minus divided by 4 is 15, and that equals x. So this one, it actually asks for x, the value of x. So my answer is going to be 15. I don't have to take it another step. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.